One more mask. I'm not wearing the pulse oximeter this time. I'll just pull it out of my pocket and put it on when I finish. Because we all know it's going to beep and we all know you can't really read it while I'm riding by now. Unless maybe you can, I don't know, I haven't checked. Ordered from Melinda, who is adorable. This is one of Strange creatures making weird squeaky noises on the roads. No idea what that was about. Anyway, this mask was ordered from Melinda, who is adorable. I believe I mentioned that. Loves you all, without touching the face. It's printed with plastic, so this part is nice, soft, clear cotton. This bit here is actually a waterproof plastic shield over it, which is a, a bit silly, you know? All the lettering is stuck on plastic, which can't make it any more breathable than it would be if it was just plain cotton. Pretty cheap until you have to pay an eight pound handling fee to pay the customs import fee after they get sent here, which suddenly, you know, adds eight pounds or four pounds or two pounds 67 or whatever to, uh, to the price of each one. Anyway, off we go. Commentary to come along the way. Hey. I think you can probably hear me more clearly through this than you could through the, uh, the headscarf, yeah? Yeah. Feels good. Certainly less annoying than the headscarf, or the 3M mask, so far. It's doing nothing to filter out that farmyard smell right now. every time I breathe in.
and stopped. And zip up pockets are kind of awkward to open one handed. And the thing comes out and goes on a finger and turns on. See how well we're doing. Am I dead yet? 99, 124. Wow. Well, that certainly beats heck out of all the other mess, doesn't it? I'm still at 99%. I'm still wearing this mask. Only 6% from the effort of waving around. Okay, that can go back in my pocket. This mask can go in my pocket. And I can make one more circuit, bare-faced. Which is when I'm really at my ugliest. Yeah, it doesn't look smarter on that side. It's got this plasticky lettering and a plasticky symbol there. Which isn't even accurate, they've, put, they've cut out a circle from a Mercator projection. projection. Anyway, stuff that in a pocket, it can get washed when I get back. And let's go around with no mask on one more time. Once more for science! So not changing gears means, you know, I don't have to make the exact same gear change in the exact same place each time to keep it fair. So I'm writing this as a single speed.
Oh, and by the way, Himalayan balsam is edible. So, you don't have to just rip it out of the ground and throw it away. You can rip it out of the ground, wash it, and eat it. in the road. Awkward. I don't want to film them without consent, even though it is legal. So, you get to look at a hedge. Bad facial sunburn. Right, junction. And stopped. And the same awkwardness with the pocket. And the mask and the thing are entangled. Turning it on. And see how dead I am. Or not. 97 and 138 98 and 139 99 So, uh, pretty quick recovery Same as with Melinda's mask So I would say, personally uh, the headscarf over my head and then wrapped across was the least effective because it fell off twice. The headscarf across my mouth was the most annoying. The folded twice pair of trousers across my mouth was not particularly great, but not, not at all bad. I think the Melinda mask being sucked into my mouth when I was breathing may have been worse than the trousers actually. In terms of breathing rate, I haven't reviewed the footage, but sorry, recovery rate. I would say um, Melinda's mask was the best overall. The 3M mask was great up to about 97 or 98% and then bizarrely slow. And the trousers were fine and the trousers were a little slow, weren't they? And the headscarf was, I th it seemed the slowest. So these little lightweight masks, not a problem anyway. And to clarify, the mask isn't supposed to protect me. So, you know, if I'd given you a, a really horrible Paul's blackheads and all close up down the side of my nose, you might have seen a gap. I did mention the metal band on the top of the 3M mask doesn't perfectly fit anyone. There's always a little gap. With a cloth, ma cloth mask? With a cloth mask? They're all across your face. Especially if you have hairs on your thin line, some air can squeeze in through the little gap. Yeah. When you're inhaling, you're drawing air in, and it can come in through those gaps around the mask. And it can carry infectious droplets in through there. So the mask is, sorry, one of those masks, is not going to be 100% effective. S10 respirator with a dew filter should be. What an S10 respirator would also do to some extent is put obstacles in the way as you breathe out. It has that valve you have to breathe out through. It makes it sound like Darth Vader because it pops open and closes. The whole time, you know. I find your lack of faith disturbing. And because you have that valve in the way, some of your breath will, you know, some of any droplets in your breath will stick to it. With a cloth mask, all the droplets in your breath are getting blown into that cloth. The gaseous, vast majority of your breath goes right through it. Any virus particles that are in those droplets 
are going to get caught in the cloth along with the droplets. Maybe not all of them. Maybe 99%, maybe 97%, maybe 90%, maybe even only 80% of them get stopped by the cloth. But that's still a heck of a reduction in the number of infectious particles you're spraying out. And if the cloth mask, I don't know, reduces the number of other people you infect by 60%, and that takes you from infecting 2.5 other people on average, I'm talking to you collectively, infecting 2.5 other people each on average, to infecting 0.9%, did I say 60%? three-fifths, so that'll take you down to exactly one. Silly me. If that takes you from infecting 2.25 other people on average, down to infecting 0.9 other people each on average, that's made all the difference it has to. Even if it only takes you down to 0.99 on average. As long as that number is below one, the number of cases per day is decreasing and we're winning. If the number is above one, it's increasing. We have an epidemic. So it doesn't have to be perfect protection. It certainly doesn't have to be perfect protection for the person wearing it. If everyone who's infected is already wearing one, when they become infectious, which can be several days before they actually become sick. And is it useful enough? Thank you. Drive through. Possibly useful analogy. Imagine if instead of making it make people cough, it makes people pee. Disease going around that makes people pee. And instead of getting infected by inhaling infectious droplets or rubbing infectious droplets into your eyes or you know drinking direct from a bottle that has an infectious droplet on the neck because someone coughed in the supermarket, etc. etc. Sharing a glass with an infected person, whatever. Instead of that, you get infected by pee soaking through your skin, which doesn't really happen in real life much because skin is waterproof. Mostly. Right? So imagine this is a disease that is spread by people's piss getting on your skin and causes the infected to piss. People are going around and suddenly start peeing all over the place. If everyone's wearing trousers, they're only going to pee down their own legs. If you're wearing trousers and an infected person pees on you, your trousers aren't going to stop that pee getting into your skin. The mask doesn't stop infectious particles getting into your lungs. But if the infected guy is wearing trousers, he's only peeing down his own leg. If everyone's wearing trousers, nobody pees on anybody else. The disease doesn't spread. So, it's not a liberal conspiracy. It's not a socialist plot. It's not a fashion statement. It's Epidemiology. Science. It doesn't care what colour tie you wear. It's just, you know, it works. So keep your muzzle down range. Wear your mask. Quit whining, snowflake. It's a beautiful day.